outro cast. Nice to meet you. Likewise, we have a mutual friend or two, but we're going to come back to that one in a little bit. No, you got to start with that. You got to leave with that. Well, uh, you may or may not have done an elegant music video for a band called Not a Surf. That oh my God. a very one of young my favorite pieces ever. A very young Darren used to sell T-shirts for them. Uh, occasionally, I still speak to Ira, who who doesn't love Ira Elliot? Yes. And uh, I once, I think I once slept on Matthew's couch when he lived in Williamsburg, early 2000s. Okay. But, but you more recently worked on an epic masterpiece for them. Yeah, that thing for $5,000, made it for $5,000, shot in three countries, a uh, total of eight days of shooting. That was, that was COVID ingenuity. And <laughs> like, shoot wherever you want in LA with a tiny crew and... I love that piece. I love that one. Well, not that this is the not a surf interview or anything, but I remember around the time that I knew Matthew best, they had just made the Inside of Love video. And that was just somebody's thesis video from college that they did for free. So I think not a surf has had a great history where the videos made for the least amount of money were the ones that lived on. That and that Inside of Love is pro is extremely important song in my life sure and, uh and yeah they're they're incredible and working with him was just a great pure great experience wonderful wonderful artist and great guy and a great musician of course well survive is how we were connected and i don't know if you wanted to be known that it had quibby roots to it or not absolutely i think it's part of its I think it's an important part of its story in that, you know, it's not like, hey, we made this a year ago and great, and Freestyle's releasing it. I mean, the route by which it got yeah. getting out in the world, grateful that it's being seen in this world of thumbnails right? <laughs> and how 95% of people that I know now consume their movies online like this. Say, oh, I just surf around their gut reaction as they go to um, Netflix or Amazon. And I said, well, what if there's nothing there? They said, well, then they go to Apple TV. But they go to a existing streamer mm -hmm. where stuff is free, right? Like free ish. <laughs> well, yeah, but like so the idea, the idea of the Apple TV, iTunes, VOD, like the way Blockbuster used to be. Yeah. Right. So if you didn't go see a movie when it came out in the theaters, which was all right, you'd be like, I'm gonna well, I'll just wait and I'll catch it on tape or right. right. Disc. Yo, showing it at three in the morning or something like that. No, even before that, <laughs> you didn't mind renting it. Yeah. To go to Blockbuster. Yeah. And, I mean, I must have digested tons of movies that are part of my vocabulary that way. Then by the time they get to cable, great. Then that's just free. And you always can find something on cable that you like. Always, right? Record that. Boom. But the idea now for people to, I mean, and I just bring this up because it deals with survive. Mm-hmm to will the thumbnail be there? I mean, it's just like, none of these places really have any publicity because there's no channels to promote, right? Like, so you just, you know the logo, you know the thing. So it relies on people such as yourself and these sites to get it out there and say, hey, check this out. This fell between the cracks, rent it, it's decent, right? And if you don't, then great, then <laughs> no worries. I oh. watched the movie last night and then I'll shut up. I no, watched, I'm not telling you to shut up. I don't tell smarter people than me to stop talking. No, it's just, I'm just older, that's all. <laughs> I watched a great film last night. Sure, which one was called it? Called to, to Catch a Killer. Okay. Do you know the movie? I was uh, given a press release or two about it, but I did not see it, so tell me more. Okay, so Shailene Woodley, Mm -hmm. Ben Mendelsohn in a 
dark uh, mass murder killer FBI story. You can put it on a plate in a buffet right next to prisoners and seven, and it would fit right in. Mm -hmm. Very complex, very literary, very smart, um, very well directed, very deep, very, you know, and really ambitious. And I remember just like, what is flipping through? I'm like, oh, I like Shailene Woodley. What is this? See the trailer? But for no theatrical release, this is, thing just appeared. Mm -hmm. It was 24 bucks to own it, 19 bucks to rent it. <laughs> and it stayed that way for two months. Yeah. And I was like, I want to see this movie, but I don't really want to pay 20 That's bucks to five. see it. Yeah. So I waited, sure enough, and another like month goes by. And now it's expanded into these different platforms. And it was $5.99. Right. Loved it. Fantastic. Yeah. Really, that, really that, good uh, film. Was that a Paramount or a Saban Films title? I, I'm remembering the, the press release a little bit. Uh, vertical. Vertical Entertainment, yes. So, but Film Nation was the foreign sales and financier they're they're really high end you know carter burwell did the score mm -hmm. jaylene woodley ben mendelson and i know the plight of it i'm involved in that world of like okay what actors are attached to get you a certain budget film yeah of a genre thing even a producer i'm working with now remembered the script he goes oh it got made but it it obviously fell between the cracks Nobody I know talked to has ever seen it, knows about it. So full circle, Quibi collapses. Nobody watches this piece in chapters, really. And we were lucky enough to make a feature version of it mm -hmm. and get it done with like, you know what, we should, we should just make this feature version really quick. Let's just, let's just tighten it up and add some shots and scenes and remix it so we have it. And I'm glad we did. Sure enough, three years later, it's out in the world. It's three years is an eternity to the filmmaker. But some of these junkets I'm doing, the films are five years or six years old. You never know. Three years is not the longest anymore. It, it doesn't. And you look at it and we watched it last week. We had a big screen. You know, we had a screening where we were able to invite people. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's the only chance I'll ever get to watch a big screen since it's not getting a theatrical. It played great. This movie should be on a big screen. And you can say, oh, 10 years ago, eight years ago, it would have been. You know, it was the kind of, it was kind of very much a Lionsgate movie. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a focus or a searchlight movie, but it's very much a, you know, it would have been a Lionsgate thing in... 500 screens for a uh, little I while. I agree. And you have the movie stars at the top of the whole thing. But this might be too of an inside baseball question for you. But most of the Quibi content, I remember going to the Roku channel and Roku and people not realizing that it was originally the Quibi stuff. Did you get the rights back to this? I was just the director for hire. You know, and the guys that did hire me that had said, great. Everybody in the world making something for Quibi. It was the greatest deal in the world. Yes. <laughs> Make it for Quibi. They license it for the phone and you get it back in 18 months to sell it wherever you want. I mean, who's not, they're basically paying you to rent your movie for yeah. an exclusive digital phone window. And then you could take it back and go sell it elsewhere. I think in all of the machinations and deals, it didn't work out that way. It didn't work out that clean for people. So if you've ever been involved in a bankruptcy, yeah, it's ugly. It's bad. It's never good. It's never good for the children. And so our movie was a child that got shunted into another place and Roku got to deal with their life, a bargain basement thing. Yeah. I don't have Roku. I don't even know what Roku is. But 
again, it was on there as these short things, and you know, but it never, it never, um, it never got released as the movie completely until now, mm -hmm. which is good. So as a filmmaker, now I accept it. Like, all right, great, it's out there, and people can discover it five years from now, ten years from now, twenty years. Right, I mean, whatever. Just throw it out there. At least you finished it. At least it's not uh, buried in the permanent quibby. No, no, no. <laughs> At least it's, that's what I mean. Yeah, it, out there is really, really, really important. Yeah. About a year ago, I made a film. I made a little dance film, right? Called called the Severing. Mm -hmm. Tiny, seven thousand dollar dance film, non linear like audience like this, right? Right. But Tino Lorber said, we'll help you, we'll release it. It means it's got an outlet. It means it's on VOD. They release a Blu-ray. We did a little theatrical. We got some reviews. That's really important for a filmmaker to have something out there, mm -hmm. to have a place where people can find it if they see, if they see fit. You know, as opposed to it sitting on my website. Yeah. My website's got TV pilots I made that never saw the light of day. Really? Okay. Yeah. Fuck it. I'm not so, going to get, you know, Fox isn't going to come after me and, sue and see, say what? Take it off? Like, sure, go ahead. Hey, some of the greatest pilots ever really would entertain all these decades later, like right? that Conan O'Brien one called Look Well with Adam West and the Heat Wave and Jack, Jack Black, Owen Wilson one. There should, I forget which person was saying it, if it was Adam Krola, somebody was saying there should be a 24 seven channel of just the pilots that didn't get picked up. Absolutely. <laughs> the unseen, totally. <laughs> you just rotate the stuff that never got seen, the yeah. unaired, the orphans, People yeah. just like give it to the place, and when they any revenue that comes in, people they could figure out some sort of, you know, some sort of sharing. Um, there's there's a lot of stuff. Every filmmaker's got something that they'd love to have seen. You you could have a block of all the Dave Chappelle shows that didn't get picked up. Uh, you could have your Dave Chappelle afternoon. But anyway, hey, back to Mark Pellington over here. So it's a new movie to us. It's an old movie to you. Are we allowed to know what's coming next from you? Where to look next for you? Um, I wish I had something locked in to say, yes, this is next. I am says Arlington Road is upcoming. Is that true? As a TV series? Yes. No. Okay. No. So IMDb is wrong. Yeah, well, that that's why I never put anything on there. Yeah. Um, like, that's not... Mothman Prophecies is a lot closer to the TV series than Arlington Road. That's actually being written and has a studio behind it. Arlington Road's really great, but is in limbo. Mm -hmm. Movie-wise, I have a movie called Lone Wolf with mm -hmm. Melissa Barrera that we're close to getting financing on and a thriller called Mom, which is a female Taken that we're mm -hmm. out casting right now that's really, really, really good. Kind of a meditation on violence, a very 70s, kind of like Lee Marvin prime cut, kind of like that style of, you know, Schrader's hardcore, that kind of like, but it's a woman now trying to get, you know, get her daughter back. But really, really smart and good movie, written by a, a journalist, first crack at screenwriting, hmm. and a contained thriller set in two thousand four called Tactics, kind of an analog era hostage thriller that I describe as Dog Day Afternoon with the intensity of Hurt Locker. Hmm. And that's financed and we're out casting now the problem is with the strike and the D sag it's just like it, it takes a already slow moving turgid hollywood <laughs> and now slows it even more it's like right constipation hollywood's pretty slow and constipated unless you're like the hipster making stuff for streamers 
Mm -hmm. If you're a struggling person who makes something with any kind of depth or you're an old guy like me, you have to fight 20 times as hard to get shit made. You know, it's, it's, it's not as slow as the publishing industry. That's arguably even slower. Um, but I wrote a book that's coming out next year. Really? And what's that about? Well, it's actually, it's, it, it, it'll good. Hopefully everything 2024 will be my year. Yeah. It's called The Visualist, and it's a 40-year memoir about making, telling stories and making images from music videos, commercials, to movies, to documentaries, to TV shows, kind of an overview of what was it like to make things? What didn't get made? How do you pitch a movie? How do you pitch a TV show? What, you know, just because I've made a lot of stuff in a lot of mediums, and so it's kind of a maker share. I share some stories, some wisdom, some bruises. And I think it'll be very entertaining to anybody who's in the industry because it kind of just like, how do you keep your resilience and faith when you're basically being said no to 98% yeah. of the time? Yeah, the it's like the minor league baseball player uh, journeyman journey but the key is you're still making great art all these years later and you didn't take no for an answer and just quit right okay exactly okay i'm 61 i've made nine movies right and had some premieres and like i've had a decent career if it ended now i still have stuff i'd like to make mm -hmm. but it's and I think if you think about that, you know, like, so you're grateful for that. Yet you've gone gone through plenty of technological changes, yeah. plenty of like, literally from, you know, film to digital. <laughs> you know, a, a lot of things made TV shows pre-internet. You know, what yeah. I mean, like tons of stuff, stuff for you too, old music video, like, and you always adapt, right? You always adapt. But what has changed? is the gatekeepers to that, there's just fewer risk takers. Yeah. There's fewer record companies, fewer studios making fewer movies. So it's just, it's just, it becomes math. Math already becomes math, right? You write an article, you pitch a story as a writer. If there used to be 50 outlets, are there 30? There used to be right. 30 outlets, are there 10? And what what are your uh, UVM numbers? What how many people are going to read it as opposed to just make something cool and put it out and we'll see what happens? <laughs> well, you understand? Yeah, I remember years. I remember 2015, 2016. I was making like a little ten minute poem or a long music video thing or a kind of abstract piece and getting it on curated online sites was as difficult as getting it on a tv studio like hmm, will nowness accept it so the curators and editors of these sites are as they have their dictums the same exactly you just said how many people are going to see it how many eyeballs yeah well that's the sad nature of it but the again the positive nature is you're still doing it fans of yours know that there's a lot to look forward to in 2024 and beyond so mark thank you for your time congrats on getting survive out against all the odds in a palatable way that is your vision really yeah. you know i think people who have who have dug my music videos the piece is very musical especially the first 30 minutes of it i, I think if you like the videos and like the other films you'll you'll see this application to this particular story you know, it's quite emotional. I think it makes good. I think it, it explores the issue of mental health in kind of a positive way about overcoming trauma. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you, you could have worse ways to spend uh, spend uh, two hours. But people should watch To Catch a Killer and Blackberry. Those are my two uh, recommends for people. And Survive. And su survive first, <laughs> then Blackberry, and then to catch a killer. Outro.